documentary? I think then no. until the until it's a successful thing, then reality TV sure sounds way better. Once it's a success. I think reality TV sounds the best. Really? It depends what I you guess. don't know you don't know what age you are talking to. Yeah. Older people wanna hear documentary. documentary. Yeah. Younger people, reality TV. Sure. All right. All right guys, have a safe flight. So we're bringing three of the young champions to Shawnee, Oklahoma to attend the Grand River Rumble, a prestigious national wrestling competition put on by the organization New Way. These kids have been training hard. We'll see if they're ready for the competition. They've got to decide whether they just want to win matches or whether they want to beat great wrestlers. Because it takes a different set of technique to beat great wrestlers. I'm trying to get through the mat in terms of what he's going to have to do to beat the better guys. Next match we try again. So what's your favorite move? Cradle. <laughs> How often do you hit the cradle? Very. Like every match I try it. Because I'm good at it. The kid just keeps doing the cradle. It's his, it's his easy win button. When he wrestles somebody that's, that he can beat, he just does the cradle, he presses the button, and he wins just like that. Not the front headlock! Get out of the front headlock! What's with the front headlock stuff? So this year I spent a lot of time focused on Warzone. Um, that's pretty much my contribution to the world of wrestling and it, it's like my baby that needs all my, my focus right now. As a result, a lot of my champions, they wanted to continue traveling to go to tournaments and compete and I was not able to travel with them as much. So there's positives and negatives to this. When they travel, they get tested, uh, they get tougher, they get to see what the better kids than them are doing. Um, they get a lot, there's a lot of positive experiences they get from taking the trips, not just in terms of wrestling, but also time with their friends, bonding time with their family, and just traveling, is, it's nice to see. But as a result, they drift away from the style that we're teaching them. And some of these kids, I haven't been in the corner with them for over a year. I've been in practice with them, they know what I expect them to do, but I'm not there in the match when it's, when it's actual time. Instead of doing what they're learning, they're being reinforced by what wins. And they're they're very advanced for their age, but they're not advanced wrestlers compared to what they're gonna be three years from now. So instead of doing our system and focusing on our moves, they end up just doing whatever is working against the other eight-year-olds, against the other nine-year-olds. So they've drifted a lot from my system. Do you want to win easy matches or do you want to get better at wrestling? If you want to get better at wrestling, you have to start doing the big boy moves. All right, next match, when I put you on top, I want to see you going for the stuff that's weak work. Good work. It's so annoying. It's so annoying. Get back to the 
You wrestled for four seconds. What did that do? So we'll see. Okay. He's dominating the kid. I'm gonna pull him back. Scrub is any wrestler that you're so much better than that they can't beat you. So, pretty much everyone, as far as I'm concerned, is Scrub. Uh, it's like a term of endearment sometimes. It could be a term of disrespect. Um, pretty much just like part of our culture. They're like this. Pin me. Mine was just better. Like, you had your interview. It was cool and all, but mine was just more cool. Headlock! Get ready for a headlock. Get ready for a headlock hard. Nice fireman. There it is. Nice easy back. My dad's going to be so proud of me that I did that. He used to say that I couldn't hit a fireman for my life. Now I hit it in a match. Yeah, we have fun time. Please come to the table. We're discussing if you saw his hands up. I wouldn't call it if I didn't see it. Just the cheek. Just the cheek. So the reason so many kids cry in wrestling is because wrestling is a sport where you're going to run into someone better than you and they are going to impose their will onto you and make your body move in ways that it doesn't want to. It's going to be physically painful, 
um, and it's a little bit em emasculating and incredibly frustrating. <laughs> The kid just keeps doing the cradle. It's his, it's his easy win button. When he wrestles somebody that's, that he can beat, he just does the cradle, he presses the button, and he wins just like that. It's not getting him better as a wrestler, um, and it's not what I want him doing, and it's not what he's gonna need to beat the next guys up. And I'm trying to teach him how to wrestle like a big boy, but the kid just doesn't want to listen. Think he'll listen? And then when COVID hit, that months of no live wrestling, no challenge, like real challenges, um, he's reverted back to not handling it so well anymore. <laughs> since day one you know he's he's probably athletically gifted a little bit more than most kids at this age so it's it's helped him with a lot of wins so he's not used to losing so when he does it's uh, it's a moment to be seen it's fun for all uh, we have a nickname for him it's called Marsha anyone who knows the Brady Bunch uh, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Um, so that's his nickname, and uh, we like to call him it when it when it happens. So if you keep following us, you're gonna see it. I promise, and it's worth the wait. <laughs> <laughs> keep coming, keep coming. Good job, buddy. All right. Hey. 
Yeah, tell me about the crab ride. Why do you and Jason practice that move so much? Because it, it's so good. I, I do it every match. And it's so hard to stop. So it, it's just a, a go-to. I have to. And you stuck with that tight waist. You didn't rush to the short hook. No, no, I, I learned from my mistakes uh, two days ago. Go three birds and elevate. No, you got to stay with the tight waist. Good, hell yeah. Go get dressed. So why did you choose wrestling for Ethan? Um, actually, Ethan chose wrestling for Ethan. Um, Ethan's brother, Sean, um, used to wrestle for Jason. And what happened was he used to come down to the room in the gym, and then he, Jason started a kids, like a, a very young kids program. Ethan and Matt McDermott were one of the first kids in that program. He loved a camp. That was it. And he did a camp, I think, when he was going into first grade and he loved wrestling so he found a year-round club and that was coach Jason. So why did you choose wrestling for Tyler? To get him better at his jujitsu. It wasn't really when, why I chose it for Ethan. Ethan was, well when do I start wrestling? We would compete in uh, jujitsu and he would do well until he went up against the wrestler and then a wrestler would, would mow him down. So we said alright let's start to wrestle a little bit to help it and it uh, sort of took over. You travel a lot for wrestling? We travel, not as much as everybody else. Um, I actually like to do a big tournament like this and then go back to the room for like a month and work on all those things that we've seen that he, you know, that, that he was missing in that tournament and then go back out. Other people just, you know, grind and go every weekend. We were away every other weekend uh, for the year. From last year, from Christmas to the end of June, I say I slept in my bed maybe three times on the weekend. How often do you travel for wrestling? Um, a lot, a lot. You know, we like to travel to and see different kids. Um, I mean, we've done a lot of traveling to Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Um, one, just once to Connecticut. It's a lot, but it's good. It's. I get to spend time with my son, he gets to hang out with some friends, and we have a good time. Do you spend a lot of money on wrestling? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. And you don't mind spending that money? I don't even, even know I do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. 
Yeah. Uh, figured, tried to figure it out. It's between the lessons, the travel, the hotels, the car rentals, the, the eating on the road. You know, you're what some people make in a year. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of money, but it's it's worth it. You only get one chance with the kid when he's young, and and that's what we like to do. But we've made our like traveling more like mini vacations. We always try to do something wherever we are. But I mean, just in the amount of time to to get the kids to the practices, to get to you know to get them to privates, and now Ethan is also also does about as much practicing with wrestling as he does practicing with soccer. So he's uh, he's also on a, a tier one soccer team, and uh, so he travels with them too. So that we have to, he, he likes to break that up because you know it, sometimes for a young child like this, if you if you just you're too much into one sport, you can burn yourself out a little too. And you and you when you finally get to where it counts, and say high school, you you burnt yourself out after all these years of grinding. So he kind of breaks it up with the soccer. Here we go. Tommy, you know, you're and I got the jumbo glizzy. With extra glizzy I didn't get glizzy sauce this time. You guys look so good together. Champs. Champs. Yeah, this, this reminds me of like one of those movies where you fall in love with this girl and she has a kid and then you're like skeptical at first but you take them to the carnival. It gets a lemonade. I hate those movies. Those are the worst. That's a lame rom-com movie. I don't like that movie either. I truly hate romantic comedies. Yeah, they're not very good. They're, there's been a couple. There's a couple great ones. They're nice when you're sad about being lonely. No, they're not. They're the worst <laughs> when you're sad about being lonely. Wait, why are you like that sad about being lonely? I'm not. I'm not lonely. But I have been sad about being lonely before. I get all the chicks. Do you really? Yeah. Cool. I don't. I, I I reject those chicks though. Why do you reject them? Because I don't need no girl. I'm going to sit right here. <laughs> Try to call my dad. He's I don't know how you're supposed to eat it once you get, like... Yeah, you have to, like, maneuver it. Does it slide down the stick further? You have to... Is that your dad? What's going to go? It takes a while to beep, but then it would beep. Uh, hey, Dad, uh, you're probably on a call, so I'm not going to disturb you anymore. If you wanted to get it back, you'd have to say... What did you say you want to be when you grow up? Uh, I'm just, I, I want to go with the flow. You want to go with the flow? I just want to go with the flow. What's that mean? Like, what do you mean by go with the flow? I don't know. I'm, I'm like 11. I don't have no life choices. I'm just... Well, I'm not saying you got to make choices. I'm saying, right... Like, if you had to choose now, what would your choice be? You could cho you could change uh, it at any point. I'd I want to be... Uh, ooh, oh, that's tough. Okay. Maybe, like... If it was like, all right, Ethan, college starts next year, what do you want to study? Oh, okay, that's even worse. Um, I guess I'd study, like, well, I wouldn't want to study. I just want to, like... What do you want to learn about? The football. You want to learn about football? No, I want to, I want to, I, I don't want to wrestle because it makes no money. Okay. Uh, I want to play, I don't know. 
I don't know. I don't. Uh, I get. I. I want to golf. I want. I want to be a pro golfer. Well, you're a little late to that. Game. You better start right now. I. I am a golfer. All right, I play oh. golf. Dude, are you good? Yeah. What do you shoot? What does that mean? Not that good. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> what do you? What's your score if you play 18 holes? What, what's your like average score? What's your handicap? Like two. Two? two yeah. What does that? That's not how golf works. Yeah, it is. You don't get a two. What do you mean? I got a two. Two's your handicap? No, I got two in 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 a uh, par five. I hit it in two. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yeah. Yo, you got you got you did a hole in two on a par five. Yeah. This kid's a liar. <laughs> that's a liar. That's called, that's called either. I've hit like a. No. That's either called an albatross or a double eagle. I think it's the other one, no, but definitely. Double called, eagle's like a lie. Yeah, that's, that's a whole. You get two on a par five. That's like you're like one of the best golfers ever. I got, I got a hold of one in the Oh, that even better. No, I, I went to the, to, the, to the US Open and went to the par five. Where, uh, you might consider being the storyteller when you grow older, because you're spinning stories right now. So. I went, I went, and I, I got. You're, uh, you're on the phone with your dad. You've been, you've been recording oh. that whole message. My <laughs> <Bye>, dad. <laughs> yeah, press one. Press one. Be satisfied with it. Be satisfied. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, I want to be a storyteller. Wait, no, I gotta continue my story. Okay. So I went to the U.S. Open with David Johnson. Okay. And I was like his, I, I, he was my, my uh, caddy. He would cl carry my golf clubs. Okay. And I hit a, I hit a, the, the one that that uh, that the guy, got, the, his name starts with a K. He's like he won the U.S. Open, and and he he got I I did it right next to him, and I went. And hit it, and he got a hole in, in four, and I got a hole in one. Excellent. Are you familiar with Happy Gilmore? 